Next on our list is spiritual gifts. And there are people that think they're saved because they speak in tongues, they perform healings and miracles, or they prophesy and hear words from God. Are these things proof of one's salvation? No, it's not. I mean, that's exactly where we started uh, earlier in Matthew 7. They said, Lord, Lord, didn't we do miracles? Okay, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we have a powerful spiritual experience? Mm -hmm. Or to be able to do these great things? And he said, I never knew you. So uh, it's obviously possible to have a spiritual experience that's not from God. It's obviously possible to have a spiritual experience that in some cases is really valid, all right, mm -hmm. for true Christians, but it's still in some cases not from God. The, spirit, the experience itself it doesn't validate someone's belief. The belief has to be found to be true from the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's that passage we talked about earlier, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. So what you have is religion, church, uh, all of these things, but it's not very powerful. It doesn't really do anything for you. So what's going on today is that they're adding mysticism and spiritual experiences oh, yeah. to liberalism. Mm -hmm. And now it seems even real and it really makes the delusion even greater because now your false belief is being validated by a false experience. Mm -hmm. And I think it's even more dangerous. So, um, if so you can find certain things that were true in the scriptures that actually happened. That it doesn't mean that there can't be more than one source. Um, in other words, other religions have speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you can't, that doesn't prove that you're a Christian. Hearing words from God, we don't need new words from God. We have the word from God. That's God right. has spoken in these last days through his son. After mm -hmm. having spoken, I'm taking, thinking of Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, having spoken in the fathers and the prophets in many portions in many ways. And mm -hmm. so there's a finality to the speaking. And the words of Jesus were given to us by his authorized apostles. So we have that. Any idea coming into my mind, I might think is from God, but there's no way to know that it is. Um, exactly. And you have to line it up with God's word and test the spirits and such. But what, what does God's word say? Last on our list is people think they're saved because they're doing mystical practices or having spiritual experiences. You know, there are those that seek supernatural and mystical experiences, and they, they say that it draws them closer to God and on their journey to the kingdom of heaven. Are these experiences a way to get them closer to God and leading them to salvation? Yeah, so, you hear people talking about being spiritual all the time. Mm -hmm. And you see it on the talk shows, on the secular talk shows. They have, oh, I'm very spiritual. Usually what that means, they're new age or they do yoga, or they're uh, into some uh, mystical version of Christianity. And, and basically what mysticism is, is the idea that you could have this direct contact with God without having to go through a mediator, okay? Mm. And that is a rejection of biblical Christianity because the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. okay? But they feel that there's many paths to God and that you can connect with God, and usually it's done through an altered state of consciousness of some sort. The fact is that Satan is very open-minded, and he's got thousands. There's no limit to how many different experiences you can have to contact spirits or to be mm -hmm. mystical. Contemplative prayer is when somebody picks a religious word. It could be anything. It could be Jesus. It could be Abba. It could be any word like grace, anything, mm -hmm. and you repeat it over and over again in your mind, which is a technique that's been borrowed from transcendental hmm. meditation. Wow. And if you do that long enough, you'll enter the silence. And when you enter into the silence in, in this altered state of consciousness, then that's where you hear the voices. That's when they say God will speak to you. What is, what is wrong with Christian yoga, even though well, I know... the yoga positions right. are dedicated to the, the yoga gods. The Hindus themselves say you can't separate the, the physical postures and exercises from the gods they're attached to, mm -hmm. okay? You, there's no such thing as Christian yoga as an oxymoron. All there is is pagan yoga that Christians do. Mm -hmm. 
and they're trying to sanctify what can't be sanctified. It says in Deuteronomy that we're not supposed to copy the practices of the pagans. Right. And when you see what the pagans do and how they worship their gods, you shall not do so. There are just so many uh, experiences out there that people are adding to their religion, whatever mm -hmm. it may be, and it's Satan's way of keeping people deluded and not understanding that they don't know God. Mm -hmm. So they're getting all of this experience added to their false belief system to reinforce it and make them think that they're Christian when they're not, or if not Christian, close to God. You know, there are those that think that all religions lead to God and to salvation. And so do the teachings of Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, Islam, Mormonism, Scientology, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, do they lead a person to salvation? Well, the fact is, all paths do lead to God. But they either oh. lead to God at the great right throne judgment <laughs> when he true. throws you into the lake of hell, wow. or they lead to God at the judgment seat of Christ where he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, mm -hmm. enter into the joy of thy master. You know, it, it's, there's not many different religions. There's either the true or the false. There's the because, religion of Satan yeah. or the religion of God. All other religions are some way to try to get to God in a way that God has not said. And Satan said, you shall, your eyes will be open, so there's your personal revelations, and you will be like God. Well, they preach a different Jesus, too, like the Jesus of the Mormons. They say that Jesus was a created being. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's, that's not the Jesus of the Bible Yeah, that's the God we never knew, and, and yeah. Moses warned. Not, even if a prophet comes, this is Deuteronomy 13, a prophet comes, it does a sign of wonder, and it comes true, saying, follow after gods you have not known. In other words, the gods that aren't defined in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so even if their sign comes true, Antichrist is going to do signs. Mm -hmm. But he's teaching us to serve a God we haven't known, when it, where he will teach that when he shows up in history. So therefore, there's, it's really a very simple choice, either the, path, the narrow path that leads to eternal life or the broad one that leads to destruction. That's the options. In the other religions, you have sinners who become religious leaders, or like in Mormonism, you have a man who becomes a god, but in only Christianity, you have God becoming man. Mm 